Well, I'm not gonna wait around any longer. I've got about four more reviews to take care of before the year is over. So, let's get to number 47, shall we? Oh, since the creation of the internet, a lot of people have consumed a lot of video content over the years, especially in the early days. And in the early days of the internet, when it came to video content, there have been two types of dominating fields. Porn and animation. Like myself and so many other early watchers out there between the late 90s and the early 2000s, we pretty much grew up worshipping these new freeform styles of video animation from animators who were not restricted by the censorship of the FCC. They just wanted to post what they considered their own style of unique comedy, and over time they developed their own personal fan base, which would help and support them grow in popularity. But nowadays, there are very few unique animators who are still on YouTube, mostly because of YouTube's rise in stricter guidelines, which makes it that much more difficult for people to make a decent living here on the internet. But there are those very few who continue to strive through alternative means, whether it would be from Patreon to Twitch, paid work from bigger YouTubers, or second channels dedicated just for Let's Play videos. One of those people just so happens to be Jason Steele, otherwise known as Film Cow, known mostly for his big viral hit, Charlie the Unicorn, which I reviewed all the way back in episode 2. He has continued to make many great animations to this very day. I've been following this guy since the glory days on Newgrounds.com, and what I love about him is that his videos provide his own style of unique sense of humor, which is quite charming if you ask me. If you guys ever check out his channel, he also provides some nightly streaming content which I think is absolutely very funny. So when time came for you watchers out there on my Twitter page to vote on which short video I should review next, a whopping 66% of you chose Llamas with Hats. Very interesting. Very well, Llamas with Hats is a 12 episode limited series which is about two llamas named Paul and Carl, who share an apartment with each other. This limited series lasted from 2009 to 2015 and, well, let's just say this is how the video starts. Carl, there is a dead human in our house. Oh, hey, how did he get here? Oh yeah, it's a dark comedy. Paul asks Carl why there is a dead body in their house and Carl gives him a pretty reasonable explanation. All right, well, I, I was upstairs. Okay. I was uh, I was sitting in my room. Yes. Reading a book. Go on. And, uh, well, this guy walked in. Okay. So I went up to him. Yes. And I, uh, I stabbed him 37 times in the chest. Oh my fucking God. I never said it was a good one, but hey, something's better than nothing. Also, if you think that killing a person in your own home and eating their hands was bad enough, the next day, Paul and Carl are stranded on a life raft in the middle of the ocean as their cruise ship is sinking. Carl opens up to Paul, telling him that he shot the captain with a harpoon, headbutted the children off the ship, and used an old couple's blood to drench their only life raft. Paul is, of course, upset with all this. However, Carl is quite contempt. Later, Paul and Carl are at the city where everything is on fire. It turns out that Carl was able to cause a civil war, thus engulfing the entire landscape into flames. You toppled the South American government, Carl! The people have spoken. Viva la resistance! You pushed the resistance leader into a giant fan! He was a traitor and a scoundrel. Well, there's nothing quite like starting fresh in a third world country by eliminating both of the opposing leaders. So after eating a hotel bartender, questioning Paul's gender, and stuffing orphan meat inside of a suitcase, they head back home where Carl walked all over the carpet with his dirty hooves. Hmm, you know what? I was expecting a lot more, but you know- Well, uh, there we go. It turns out that Carl wanted to surprise Paul with a nuclear bang and floating faces strung up with balloons. Afterwards, Carl surprises Paul again, creating a tear in the space-time continuum with baby hands pouring out of the hole. Eventually, enough is enough for Paul as he tells Carl that he is leaving after seeing his latest display of a meat conveyor and a meat dragon to go along with it. Carl does not take this very well and tries to find a new replacement by putting a Paul mask on a sheep and shows off his flesh-covered hand chair. It's called modernism, only I've made it more modern by using face parts of city council members. I disagreed with the election results. Well, you have to admit, the sheep does bring up some pretty interesting points. But it does not work out, and Carl begs Paul to come back to him. Paul refuses every offer Carl throws his way, and starts talking to the Paul mask. 
It gets to a point where Carl continues his conversation with the inanimate object a little bit more intimately. Carl! Who said that? It was me, Carl! Oh! Okay! In that case, do you think you could elaborate? The Paul Mask tells Carl that he has much more work to do. Carl doesn't understand what it means by that, and the next thing he knows it, Carl is stuck in his own gore pit with a broken leg. Carl is beginning to dislike the Paul Mask, since it mostly just floats around and screams his name. And after managing to destroy all of humanity, Carl gets angry at the Paul Mask. He finally realizes that the Paul Mask isn't exactly Paul, and decides to pay the real Paul a visit. I'm coming in, Paul. I'm sorry if this violates your restraining order, but it's important. Paul? Paul? Oh. I guess you're gone. Hmm. <laughs> what a pity. And so, the video ends with a sad tune, with Carl overlooking the sea on top of a bridge as he finally loses it. Carl! Carl! Thus concluding the short-lived series Llamas with Hats. At first, I really didn't have much to think about watching this video the first time around. However, after re-watching this video the second time around, I realized that this video has a bit of a deeper meaning, and that would be depression. You see, throughout the very first few episodes, Carl does get a kick out of killing random people, but that was mostly to satisfy his need to get attention from Paul. When Paul left, Carl did try whatever he can to fill that empty void. But by trying to do so, he began this very slow, downward spiral into depression, which ultimately drove him insane. You even notice this by the end credits as well, when it starts off very cheery in episode 1. And by episode 11, it pretty much ends with a very slow, deep, dark depression of a musical tone. I guess in a way, it seems like that was something Film Kyle was trying to relay that message to his audience. Which is, we all need someone in our lives to fill that empty void, so we won't ultimately be alone in the end. It could be a friend, or it could be a loved one, who knows? That pretty much all depends on the person, what they really need. And with that said, this is a very clever and smart series, which is why I'm going to have to give this one a very high 4.5 out of 5. And if any of you watchers out there would like to watch this video in its entirety, or any of his other videos in general, feel free to check him out in the link in the description box below, which I will provide. And furthermore, with that said... The hour is upon us, and the darkness is closing in. Wait, what? What the hell are you talking about? What I am talking about is the other candidate. He's been telling me for the last month. But don't worry, I managed to teleport all over California until I double backed into town. <sighs> Why is he after you? My best guess is that he found out about me working for the boss. And I may have found its weakness. You have? It's possibly. I've been talking to the other Insanos and- You talk to the other Insanos? We have a group sky chat. Anywho, they tell me that these candidates are from the Dark Dimension. The darkest, most evil and vile dimension in the far back corner of the Omniverse. I see. Then why are they called candidates? They go by many names and many realms. Candidates is the more PC term for these guys. These candidates are always in competition with each other to see how many alternate realms that they can rule. Whether it be by manipulation, sheer force, or even sometimes calling out the other for a fight to the death. Precisely. The boss called them out earlier this year to see, to, to not only challenge him, but also to get to see who controls the rift and this realm as well. I hear everyone keeps talking about this rift, but to be honest with you, I really don't know what this is. Well, apparently this rift has the power to manipulate people's minds and pretty much brainwash them into doing their own bidding. I thought your boss can already do that. He can only do that to a select few weak-minded individuals. 
Then he uses those people to rally to their cause. Just like hashtag change the channel. Yeah, well, it turns out that it was more than just a way to divide the internet critics. It was mostly a test run to see if it could actually work. As you recall, he did have two out of the three rings, which granted him a small portion of the Rift's control, but at the same time, it also drained a lot of his dark energy. Which is why he needs us to take on this final candidate. He's still w way too weak to take him on. That is correct. He was also impressed by how you handled yourself against those creatures that he sent out and uh, Matt Haas. I'm not a hired gun, you know. I'm an internet critic. Honestly, you and I don't really have much of a choice at the moment. After all, I'm still unable to get back to my home dimension, and he still has uh, that file of all that secret dirt on you, whatever that may be. Did you at least find out how to kill these guys? In the case of our mystery guest, this candidate is weak to two things. A living being of pure innocence and filth. What? The Insanos tell me that these candidates are crippled by a living being of pure innocence. Not many of those types of people in California. And what about this filth? And the filth isn't just some pile of disgusting dirt. It is actually a person. If you find the filth, you will find your weapon. That sounds pretty vague if you ask me. Hey, it is the best I can come up with. If I find any more info, I'll let you know. All right, well, thanks for the help. Anyways, I gotta go. The boss is expecting a battle strategy soon. He's gonna be coming by your place. And he's also going to be expecting a bigger review coming out of you in the next episode. I know. And I got just the movie for the next episode. It's time to end this.